I'm Osborne Foreman and in this video I'm going to discuss both the pros and cons of Simply Wall Street as well as show you how I find high quality stocks to buy in under just a few minutes. And if you like the video please drop one of these to support my channel beating that YouTube algorithm. In a few days I will be paying for my next year's annual subscription for Simply Wall Street which would mark one entire year of using the platform so I figured that one year review of the platform would be a good time to mark my thoughts as I've had a lot of time to really learn about Simply Wall Street and get to grips with what they offer. Furthermore, this is something I've used on a near daily basis, either for fueling my own investment knowledge or through creating content on the channel, which you would frequently see that I do use information or at least pictures from Simply Wall Street. But I would like to mention that I'm currently using the unlimited premium plan, which is only seven pound a month because I was grandfathered into this tier due to being an early supporter of the platform. Whereas if you wanted to pay for the same plan I have now, it would be probably around 16 pounds per month. So pricing has changed slightly, although that shouldn't impact my review that much. Firstly, with the pros, it has a very simple user interface or UI. It's easy to read and at a glance, you can have all of the information that you need. For example, in one of the ways that I would find a high quality stock in under a few minutes, I would jump onto Simply Wall Street, I would type the ticker symbol in, I would click the aim list variant as it's usually either on the London Stock Exchange or the AIM markets, I would then look immediately the share price performance in the last year. Has it downtrended a lot or has it had some positive momentum? Then further on, I would jump onto the past performance. At that point, I can see the earnings and revenue and free cash flow at a glance. If revenue is going up, earnings are going up at a similar pace, if not faster, meaning that earnings are scaling with revenue. This is a good sign in my book. For instance, though, if they are unprofitable, revenue is growing, but free cash flow is positive or trending upwards, then that also could be a good sign of a strong investment if they are trying to sacrifice profitability for high growth potential. Then I would jump onto the balance sheet or the health tab as they use on Simply Wall Street. This will quickly tell me if their short-term assets outweigh their short-term liabilities or long-term liabilities. Furthermore, with the likes of SDI Group, we can see that they have very strong revenue and earnings growth. Their balance sheet is of high quality and I believe they have little to no debt. At this glance, we can see the strength of their cash position compared to their overall debt, as well as their overall equity in the business. And then finally, I would move on to the ownership of the stock. So do directors have large holdings suggesting that they would have skin in the game? If they do, this is actually a very positive sign in my opinion, as it means that the directors are bullish on their own company and would want to hold shares of the stock. Perhaps they believe it's going to do far better over that longer term period. However, a con perhaps relating to this could be that there's simply just, no, no I'm gonna say simply a lot, I don't mean to, but there isn't just, and there's not enough detailed information to really justify purchasing a stock from what they show you. For instance, they don't show you the investor reports or relations, which I think are really crucial or important when researching a business, as you want to hear the statements from the chairman, the CEO, but you also want to see what the company is saying on their growth. It doesn't say if things are in line with expectations. It doesn't say what their plans are for the future. And whilst they do have news items and it relates to the share price at a glance, that's quite useful. I found that it's usually more cluttered than not. I'd rather look at the RNS. I'd rather look at the trading updates just to get that brief insight into how well the company's doing. And then that would be how I would dive deeper into these companies. So Simply Wall Street, I think, gives you that opportunity to quickly glance, at least for a long term, perhaps, more experience with a platform investor, you can quickly look at a company, decide whether it's worth researching further or not. If not, you can leave it, but then you've only spent a minute or two learning about the business. I do like the way that they have a quick bio. It tells you exactly what the company does, although they're usually structured in a very similar way, and it's usually quite complicated as well. For instance, they might say, a business engages in the development, manufacture, and selling of certain products in the UK and internationally. I feel there's a lot of unnecessary information there, but I do understand as to why they have presented all of that. Although that's just minor nitpicking more than anything, 
but the fact that they don't really have extra information other than the basic levels does mean that you would have to you couldn't use this as a standalone platform but for something you pay a small amount per month for i do think there's a lot of value involved with it and then you can dive further into other information sorry about that i left the fan on so i needed to just go and turn it off just in case audio was in any way impacted i do like that they highlight only the key information which goes back to the con of not enough information to really justify a stock purchase but because it is simple simple i think it is good for beginners beginners can then learn the basic fundamentals to look for in businesses and in fact this is exactly what i did when i first started investing or stock picking in the uk in fact this was just over a year ago now and this was a great way that i was able to learn about the companies what qualities i should look for in strong businesses and then use that to fuel my research in the future and this actually in fact taught me a lot about investing in the markets because i would look at these companies that have done well over the last few years see oh look they're profitable and they've had really consistent revenue growth of double digits or more and so perhaps this is something to look for whereas in fact perhaps all of these companies that did have that good run-up now they have very strong balance sheets with low debt so in future i will try and look for companies like that and so it really does teach beginners and i remember at least in my experience that i would slowly get through the categories and then i'd be like oh now is a good time that i should start learning about returns on equity capital employed or returns on assets and then see what a good level is to have so that i can look at simply wall street and then further learn from this information then in future when i perhaps move on to other platforms i might be using something like yahoo finance i can see oh the return on equity is what 40 percent that's great i want to look further into this company for instance and so i found it's really useful for beginners so if you are a beginner that is looking to really improve your stock picking skills i think this is a great place to start and it doesn't overwhelm you with all the excess information that may be quite off-putting that perhaps more premium or tools that are targeting more experienced investors may do although some of this information is high quality some of it really is not and that's where you go on to their valuations or their fair value estimates when you look at the valuations, for instance, you'll get a pretty spot on price to earnings ratio, price to earnings growth rate, and also price to book ratio. I've had no complaints with these, although at times I have questioned the industries that they have compared it to. For instance, you might have a stock that is in the beverages industry, and it might say, well, this company right here has a price to earnings ratio of 30 times, but the industry as a whole has a price to earnings ratio on average of around 45 times. I would love to know what is included in that industry because there might be red herrings and it might not be a good accurate data point to really compare your analysis to but then it goes on to the fair value versus what the valuation and this is where i think they use a very limited formula not that i could do better myself that really relates to the idea of comparing the price to earnings ratio to the industry and usually if the pe is lower than the industry or, and same with the price to book ratio, which is market capitalization compared to assets in the book, that usually it'd be like, oh, this business is 50% undervalued, which I think is a really dumb way of looking at a company, at least using this tool. And I've also found stocks that are value traps, right? They're not companies that are gonna do well. And they're like, well, this stock is undervalued by 99%. And you just think, well, that's a bit ridiculous. And so I don't take that I don't I just take it with a grain of salt I really don't look deep into that but that is only one part of the analysis that they give you provide you for each company and so it's easy just to ignore that respective data usually I would talk about customer service is that something I feel is very important in a business if a business doesn't have customer service why should you be paying for that service in the first place well and I'd love to add more thoughts on this but over my years usage of a near daily basis, I've not had a single issue. I've not had to speak to the customer service team, and so I've not had an issue and I can't really comment on it. I have had a few friends or people that I know that have spoken to the customer service team that seem happy overall, including some that did manage to haggle for a discount on their yearly plan. So I do feel that there is some potential with the customer service team, but then again, as I said, I can't truly comment, but I would see this as more of a pro than a con, because if I'm not having issues in the first place, then overall, surely that's a good thing for the, uh, the entire platform of Simply Wall Street. One issue, which is again, more of a nitpick that I do have, is that the data is updated on a delay. 
Whilst this isn't really an issue for a long-term investor as it's not that big deal because you're not looking to get on in technical analysis and get on specifically on a certain day. Rather, you're looking at a stock where it could be in the next five, 10 years. And so the entry price right now perhaps is less of a, a deal breaker to you. The trouble is, is that the delay is quite late. So this UK stock market would close, for instance, and it usually won't update. Instead, it would wait until at least the US market is closed. And if you are from the UK, this means that you might be waiting until very late in the evening before it actually updates as a whole. Meaning that if you track your portfolio of Simply Wall Street, which overall I've had a good experience with, it does mean that it's gonna be delayed. And sometimes the market is already open again by the time you see your portfolio has been updated. But on the other hand, they do have a really good dashboard, which is when you first load up the website or on the app, you see a dashboard of what the best and worst performing industries are of the last week. You can specify longer time periods if you like, which countries or stock markets are doing the best as well, and also which earnings or earnings updates or what companies have got an upcoming earnings update or ex-dividend date in the next month. And these are usually tailored to the companies you visited recently, you watch, or you actually hold in one of your portfolios, which I think is a very useful tool. And in fact, is a great way of seeing at a glance information that perhaps you might have missed because you may not be specifically looking for this information. For instance, on the day that this will be uploaded, so the results will already be out, it's telling me that Boohoo has earnings for May the 5th. If I didn't follow Boohoo that much, this could be a great piece of information, at least alerting me that this date was upcoming. And so with the dashboard there, when I do look on about a weekly basis, it's nice to see at a glance if there are any ex-dividend dates upcoming, as well as any potential big earnings releases that I should note down in the calendar to watch as they could be good opportunities to buy in. Whilst they do have a good quality website and also have an app application that you can use on your phone, I found that the app certainly lacks what the website has. It is pretty much the same and it's mirrored. So you will have all of the features of both, but the app I don't think is correctly optimized for mobile phones. This is because it's quite slow. And when I say slow, it means it might take 10 to 20 seconds to search for a stock, then to press and load the page. That's not really a big deal. And obviously if we go back 10, 15 years, technology has advanced so far that this is actually quite impressive. But I feel in this modern day and age, I don't want to be wasting time waiting for it to load. And in reality, I want to see the necessary information, learn if a stock is high quality or not, and then leave the page. I don't want to dive any deeper than that. And I don't want to have to be waiting if it's, I don't want to be waiting a similar amount of time than I will be actually looking at certain companies. But then again, as I've said before, and I've said a lot, this is more of a nitpick because I want to see the information on companies quickly. I want to know whether I need to dive deeper into it. And if I were to dive deeper into it, perhaps I'd be more patient. If not, I'd be very quick to just dismiss the stock and then move on and not waste too much time looking at a low quality company, for example. They also have a stock screener, which is good for the price, but I found it can be quite limiting. This is because they, whilst you can specify by market, for instance, the London Stock Exchange and the AIM markets, or even the BATS X China market or something, which is like the dual listed variants in China, I don't really know much about. But it, when you go into other filters, which such as industry, which is also quite good, when you move to the likes of the advanced filters, they are very limited. In fact, if you're a dividend investor and you're interested in seeing, okay, which dividends have grown consistently over the last 10 years, you can't filter for that. You can't look at your growth rate. You can't look at consistent dividend histories. You can't look at specified by payout ratio, despite being able to view this on the analysis. In fact, the only thing you can look at is the dividend yield, which I feel is quite a poor filter to use, at least if you're looking for stocks it would be a good filter to have if you wanted to avoid more dividend trap stocks with yields higher than 8%, for example. But then again, I don't think that's a great filter. And this can also apply elsewhere. You might be looking for companies with certain earnings margins. You might want profit margins of over 40%. You can't specify for that despite that being available on the analysis when you look at individual stock. And so whilst it could be a useful stock screener, at least the filters available for you haven't been that useful for me. And usually there's a lot of overlap in the industries that they specify with. And typically it's weighted by market capitalization. So they might say, oh, this stock is undervalued, but it's also a 50 billion pound company and the UK markets probably don't have much more buying power that could really push the price of this company up. Overall, I think Simply Wall Street is really good value for the money. 
After all, you may say, well, if I'm paying for the premium tier, which allows me to look at unlimited different companies each month rather than 30, you might be going, well, that's expensive. I'm only looking at companies to research them. There's a lot of free information online. Maybe that's true, but it's the information and the learning experience you get from it that I think is valuable for the money. For instance, you're investing in yourself if you are a beginner and you do buy the software. Investing in yourself by improving your own knowledge of the fundamentals to look for in quality companies. And also perhaps if you're a more experienced long-term investor, you're saving yourself time. And in these types of situations, time is money. If you're having to trawl through the investor relations just to see if a stock is worth looking deeper into or not, as a primary like search, then you're losing a lot of time. Whereas you could jump on Simply Wall Street, specify what you need to see, check if, if it's not good, get rid of it. And so I feel that Simply Wall Street is still very useful for the long-term investor as well. Whilst they did change their pricing plans recently, it could be more favorable for those that don't want to pay as much, as there is a middle tier that allows you to look up to 30 companies a month and perhaps that might be more useful as for instance, I'm a content creator. And so when people ask me, oh, what do I think of this stock? What do I think of this stock? I do often have to look, double check, and then give my opinions back, which I speak about on a Patreon. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link down below. I would say that if you're a very, very experienced investor and you're used to other softwares or tools, you might be using Stockopedia, ShareScope, then perhaps this isn't for you because you would have to relearn the format. But for more beginner style investors to intermediate level, then simply Wall Street could present a good value. Worst comes worse, you learn what you need to learn, and then you cancel it perhaps a year later. You've then learned that knowledge can imply that elsewhere in your research and perhaps have found some good companies from it. If you're interested in my free trade UK app review in 2021, then click the card at the top right of the video. Thank you for watching. I'm Osborne Foreman. Have a fantastic day.